This are open wide from the depths, from the heights. I will bring a sacrifice with deep and dead high. Hear my song, hear my cry. I will bring a sacrifice. I will bring. My pride, giving up all my rights. Take this life and let it shine, shine, shine. Take this life and let it shine. I'll lay me down. I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Whoa, hand on my heart, this much is true. There's no life apart from you. Lay me down, lay me down. Whoa, lay me down, lay me down. It's gonna be my joy to say, cause it will be my joy to say, your will, your way, it will be my joy to say, your will, your way, it will be my joy to say, your will, your way, is it will be my joy to say, your will. Your way, it will be my joy to say. Your will, your way, it will be my joy to say. Your will, your way, our way. Good morning. How are you guys and girls? All right. Ah, so we're going to continue our worship after a short meeting between me and Paul. After John catches his breath. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and continue our worship with our tithes and offerings. So if you have your tithes and offerings this morning, just get them out, lift them up, and let's say this prayer together. 
this is my tithe. It will do what God says it will do. As I try my Lord, he will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that cannot be contained. I declare at this moment, I'm surrounded by God's blessings. I am the seed of Abraham. And what God declared to him, you shall not lack any good thing applies to me today. In accordance with his word, I will walk in his divine favor and prosperity. No weapons formed against me or my family will succeed. And everything I put my hand forward to do will prosper. I thank God for his mighty power, provision, and plans through Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, Father, as we give, as we give some back to what you have graciously given us, may it go out, go forth, and bring the gospel and the good news to all the world that all may hear, that all may see, that all may hear, and that you would provide for our missionaries and for the funds that these are going to increase, Father God. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Bless both the gift and the giver. Amen. So it's that awkward time of service again to where we ask you to do something a little uncomfortable and come up and share what God is doing in your life, what God has done, what God will do. So if you have a testimony, we really, really encourage that you uh, come and share with us. I have a microphone somewhere. Thank you, Amy. So if anybody would like to come and give a testimony, now would be a good time. continue our worship. Stand with us if you would.
sing let faith let faith rise up
sing Shake Up the Ground. Come on. Shake up the ground with all my tradition. Break down the walls with all my religion. The old way is better. The old way is better. Shake up the ground with all my
part of the song, if you need a miracle, the song is for you right here. Because miracles happen when he moves, amen? Miracles happen when he moves. Healing is coming today. If you need healing, this is the time to worship. It's time to pray. Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen.
Come on, give him praise today if you want him to move. Come on. Amen. Come on. be seated. Some good worship. I didn't even realize we were on the last song. Okay. We've got uh, communion today. And, you know, I've been thinking about it for the last couple of days since uh, Lori reminded me. I have to be reminded of stuff sometimes. And uh, I've I just been thinking about it. You know, I, I don't ever want this to become just a something that we do once a month or, you know, become part of a routine or, or you know, you know, a religious thing. You know, I, I want it to, to stay what it's supposed to be. And, and so I, I've just been thinking about it. And and just this morning, I was reading again uh, in, in really this, the same section of Scripture that I, that I typically read from, but, you know, I, I uh, did, did something a little different and started from the very beginning of what Paul was saying, you know. And, and so here, here's the thing. If you go to 1 Corinthians and you read about communion, um, it's in 1 Corinthians 11. Um, in some in some translations of the Bible, they have like titles, right? What is this section of scripture about? And this section of scripture, at least in the NIV, um, is titled "Correcting an Abuse of the Lord's Supper." That's typically where we read from when we do communion without even realizing what Paul is actually doing. He's correcting the Corinthians for an abuse of the Lord's Supper. I don't want to be that guy for sure, right? You don't want to be that guy for sure, right? We don't want to be that kind of church, right? And so I'm like reading the whole thing, and and I'm going to read the whole thing this morning because I think it's so, so important. Here's what it says. In the following directives, I have no praise for you. For your meetings do more harm than good. Referring to the Lord's Supper, to communion. And he's saying, I have no praise for you because your meetings are more harmful than good. I don't want to be that guy. We don't want to be that church, right? In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. And to some extent, I believe it. We go, oh, division is such a bad thing. Those, you know. But then he says something pretty weird that's a sermon for a whole other time. He says, no no doubt, there have to be differences among you. Sometimes we, we think, oh man, the church just needs to all get along and, you know, no. It says, no doubt there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. There's division among you. There's a good chance only one of you has God's approval. Maybe neither one of you does. I just want you to keep that in mind because we're taking communion. So then when you come together, it's not, I'm adding the word even, it's not even the Lord's Supper that you eat. For when you, so then when you come together, it's not the Lord's Supper you eat. 
How many times have you, I'm, I'm asking this to myself too, done communion and it wasn't even the Lord's Supper that I was doing? I'm guilty. So then when you come to, oh, sorry. For when you were eating, some of you go ahead with your own private supper. About you. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. It's kind of a weird thing to say. So kind of at this time, um, if you were sort of like the poor guy in the church, sometimes you got to watch them take the Lord's Supper. If you were a wealthy guy, you got to eat and drink as much as you want. And Paul mentions it, so some of them are even getting drunk at the Lord's Supper. Because they're, they're eating the whole meal. They're not just taking a little piece of cracker and, and some juice, right? He says, do you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. Pretty, pretty convicting words if you're from the church in Corinth, right? Like, dang, man, you get it. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So now he's saying, you guys have been doing this wrong for the wrong reason. Let me explain it again. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat it, eat of this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, which had been happening there, apparently, will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That's something I never want to be said about me, man. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. I don't want to do that either. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have even fallen asleep or died. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, not the person that you're at odds with, but if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, no, there, there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. You worry about you. That's what it says. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, drink, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That's why many of you are weak and sick and a number of you have died. But if you are more discerning with regard to yourself, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not finally be finally condemned with the world. I don't know, to me, just reading the whole thing today just puts it back into perspective once again. I've said this before, but but just reading it, I think, makes it a little bit more serious. You don't have to take communion, okay? And I even say you probably shouldn't take communion. If you can't get right with God in the next few minutes, you probably shouldn't even take it, according to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a few minutes. Because here's the deal. You can get right with God in the next few minutes. He's awesome like that. But it does mean 
talking to God and saying, maybe I've been wrong. I don't care about that other person right now. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. And it, and it takes some of us saying, man, sometimes I come to church and I hear these things and I know the truth and, I, and, I know, and I'm so determined to change and then I leave and I don't. I'm sorry, God. I really want to do good. Mean it. Ask for forgiveness. Get right with God, man, before you eat and drink of the body and the blood of Jesus. It's pretty serious. So we're going to take, I don't know, a minute, maybe two minutes. It might feel like a lifetime. We're just going to take that time to talk to God and get right with God. And if you don't feel like you can get right with God in the next couple minutes, if it was me, I would just set it to the side and let everybody else take it. But you can. You can get right with God in the next few minutes. Saying, God, I know I've sinned. Sorry. I'm repenting. I, I really am repenting. And you mean it. Give him control. I think all of us have to do that now and then. I'm going to be quiet for the next couple minutes and give you an opportunity to get some things right with God if you need to. took the last couple of minutes to get right with God and make sure you're in the right place, then you are worthy of participating in communion because God is that good. This is a big deal, so we're going to take communion together. I'm going to read one more time. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I think it's special. I asked a couple, husband and wife, who believe in this and take it seriously to pray over the elements this morning. So I'm going to ask Chris if she would pray over the bread.
And when Dusty asked us this morning, I was reading Luke 22, and I thought, I'm just going to read this from the beginning. <laughs> the same thing as Corinthians. And the point of this was Jesus basically said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And it just made me remember the Passover was the killing of the lamb. Every year, the killing of the lamb. And that lamb's body was broken. And so I want us to take this bread right now and let's pray over that. Father, I just thank you for our Passover lamb, Father. I thank you for the Passover lamb of Jesus Christ, that his body was completely broken, that by the stripes of Jesus, Father, it's through his stripes and his broken body, his broken legs, the wounds that he received, Father, that we can receive healing and that we can receive, Father God, those things. But we want to remember that right now. We want to remember everything that Jesus went through. Father, I just thank you and I praise you for the broken body of Jesus Christ and that by that we can have restoration, that we can have healing. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you right now for this bread. Take the bread together. Father, as we hold this cup this morning, we think of you. How incredible it is that our king would die for us. Lord, that it is only your blood that stands between us and eternity in the furnace. Glory to your holy name, Lord, as we take the cup to our lips. God, we just thank you once again for the incredible sacrifice that was made for us, Lord. We just pray that as we've taken this communion, that it would just be a reminder, God. And that we would consider this throughout the day and throughout the week, and we would remember the sacrifice that was made for us, Lord. And we would remember it to the point that it drives us to even changing things that we need to change. The things that we realized as we were sitting here talking to you, God. And as we leave here, we would be reminded of those things. Oh God, we just pray today for our service. Lord, we pray that you would speak this morning. God, that your words would stick with us and sink in and change us, Lord. And God, as always, I just pray that there wouldn't be a person in here, including myself, that would leave here the same as when they came. God, I pray that you would touch minds and hearts this morning, and that we would leave here as better representations of you and better ambassadors of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So We've got a few announcements this morning, and then John's going to come up for another little Special thing real quick. Good morning, Journey Church. So our um, Encounter Student Ministries meets on Sunday evenings from 5 to 7, where they have um, a great message from Pastor John, and they have snacks and great fellowship. So if you have kids, 6th grade through 12th, please bring them and just let them have fun with their peers and 